According to Orion, he feels like a minority in his marriage. Not a good place nor space to be in only seven days into your marriage with your new wife, Lauren. I can say that this could be the lowest point, but we're talking about married at first sight. Welcome to Cliff Alerts. Today we're going to be talking about Lifetime Network's reality-based TV series, Married at First Sight, season number 17, episode number 7. But before we get into it, please like, share, and subscribe. Please click that notification button so you know when we upload new content. And we appreciate and thank you for your support of this channel. So here we go. A lot to work and unpack on, on this episode, huh? Well, it's a carryover from last week when Orion says that he wants to take sex off the table. And that bothered Lauren to such an extent that she wanted to have a conversation um, with him about it. Yeah, she even uh, went so far as to accuse him of uh, flip-flopping on the issue. She wanted to know from him specifically why would he say that she, she slept with someone prior to the marriage, that he would say sex is off the table. What exactly did that mean? He felt like the commitment and signing up for Married at First Sight would lend the participant to withhold themselves until they were married, but she had a different mindset altogether. And he wanted to keep it a sacred space, his body and abstinence, and she wasn't even thinking or considering that and obviously um that didn't set too well with lauren and she actually made the comment that she felt like she was being judged by orion and i'm uh i don't know i'm not necessarily on board with that that part at the same time i i can understand that that uh because she took a different approach and that different approach didn't set well with with orion that um, that was something that was not uh, something that worked well in her favor. In that moment, she said she did not feel safe with him because, as she said, she felt like she was being judged. Yeah, but also, too, we've already talked about this, but uh, I don't think of uh, the point that bears repeating. Why uh, on earth would you, if you're Lauren, choose to reveal something like that to your new husband that you just met seven days ago? Um thinking that the, in the interest of getting to know your your partner in a, in a complete way, that that would be a good thing to share. That kind of information you keep to yourself. That's my philosophy. I have no idea why women are going around sharing their experiences. I don't think the brother is going to be interested. And if he, he hears about it, he may respond in a kind of way that you would not like. So to avoid all that ish, you keep that information to yourself. You should have kept that for business. In other words, if I understand you correctly, don't unnecessarily volunteer information. Now, I'm not, I, I'm saying she should share the information if asked. But in what? a private format, right? But uh, certainly but, not not now. But she didn't. Uh, she asked the she asked the uh, the question to him, and he responded. But uh, then she voluntarily <laughs> divulged herself, didn't she? One thing I see a lot of women doing is treating their their men like their girlfriends. Women talk a different way when they're together, when um you know they 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 going deep. Men don't want to hear all that. Say it again. Say it again. Men do not want to hear all that stuff. They zone out. And if you want them to focus on what you're saying, speak their language. So you, you, you don't need to be Jada. We don't need information like that. It's unnecessary. Yeah, everybody knowing your business at one point can come back to, uh, to bite you in your behind at another point later on down the road. So, uh, uh, I, I just think it's unwise for a woman just meeting a man to sit him down, you having dinner, and he's getting to know you, et cetera, et cetera, and you blurt out that I've slept with a hundred men. 
And and don't forget the fact that you just got married to this person that you conversed right. with across the table. Who's that basketball player who slept with a lot of women? Will Chamberlain. Mm -hmm. Spe oh, slept he's with, one of them. He's yeah. one of them, one of many, who slept with a lot of women. Yeah, but it's perceived uh, differently when guys do it as opposed exactly. to women. Exactly. While it may be every bit as bad, it's not perceived that way. Exactly. Okay. So keep your business to yourself. That that's all you gotta do. Don't sell your own tapes. S say that again. Don't sell your own tapes. Amen. Hallelujah. And thank you, Jesus. Uh, they have this conversation and kind of uh, get, uh, um, shall we say, a little heated. Shall we say with one another? Well, the, the conversation continued when she went to the gym and she came back. Okay. And they continued the conversation. He apologized. He said he was sorry for talking about um, the sex stuff. It didn't mean anything to him. And he's really sorry that he made her feel the way she's feeling. And yeah, and he even, he even said that, you know, or took ownership of that part of it. And he also said that he felt like, at least conversationally speaking, as a husband and to make Lauren feel safe, he dropped the ball. Yeah, right. So all that's good and well, but we haven't come to the crust of what got him so heated. Yeah, but that was a mistake. If he had maybe told her, you know, what it was from the beginning, maybe they could have avoided a little bit of static and or friction between them down the road. We got to have hard conversations so we don't fall um, in best station of spirit with each other. So you put your finger on it. Is is definitely talking, but also listening as well. Yes, yes, and there huh? is a way to do that. We don't do it perfectly sometimes, but we know how to pivot to, to, to avoid stuff from sliding left. He's upset, but he doesn't tell her that the, the, the whole meat and potato of what he's upset about is that comment that she made that was totally racial and disrespectful and he said it was disrespectful not only to him his family his mother and his community it was definitely something that was all of those things you described in the way of uh, you know offensive remarks was thoughtless it was uh, insensitive it was uh, you know a few other adjectives yes. i could use to describe you know her making uh, her making that remark to her new husband of a different culture right, right? Um, one of the things that I think that, and I, maybe we've we've said this before, but again, another point that bears repeating, she should know better. Thank now, you very much. Now, last time I saw, on based on the episode, she wearing a brown jersey like I am. Huh? Huh? So that automatically comes with a certain awareness and or recognition based on how you have to go out and deal with the society as a whole or in a larger context that you are, how you are perceived and how you perceive yourself and how you deal with others ought to be more sensitive based on your own experience. Okay, so she doesn't know better and what happened, happened. But I think if the brother said, I need space, you give him space to process what is going on for him to come back now and say what exactly is the case. Be because you're going to uh, shelf your opposition to him for forgiving you immediately because that's what she wanted. Yeah. She wanted him to forgive her immediately and not feel what he's feeling. Giving uh, him the time that she thinks he needs rather than the time that he actually he needs, needs to be able to recover from this and move forward with it. So he is still steaming wrong with the vexation of spirit that she offended him and his mama and his people. And that's a deep offense. Well, because one thing he mentioned when he finally articulated what was wrong, he said, how will indigenous people feel watching this play down? You, you know what I mean? He took like some... The Black same, folk do. I was just going to say that. When you feel responsible, which is not appropriate at that particular time. Or, or agreed. Or if she were on the receiving end of that from somebody else and had to 
process and or respond to that you know based on that scenario yeah so so yeah yeah i'm 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 with you, you know, it's, a, it's a teachable moment for her to wait because you offended someone deeply she had a fight with him off camera right and she's upset she's crying and um who is consoling her but Claire, mm -hmm. and she's breaking down to Claire what happened. And she tells Claire she raised the voice and was yelling at him and that she took off her ring. Well, she but it was say, wrong to begin with. But she did say at the, on the after party, she was there crying, still hurt, that Orion took off his ring. Yeah, that was revealed. <laughs> right. So maybe, so maybe, and, and if I understood it correctly, he did that first. Yes. So if if that's the case, then maybe she felt kind of felt like, oh, well, if he can do this, I can step it up and do one better. They called Dr. Peer mm -hmm. to find out uh, what should they do because they were having difficulties. Yeah, and Lauren, Lauren was the one, I believe, that suggested that, which was good. See, I'm glad that they're showing an interaction between the counseling mm -hmm. portion of this yeah. because they go through it can, seriously. And that's what that's I've what been asking for you've been pushing for a that long for. time. For not only this show, but others that we re uh, other shows that we review in terms of a presence by the experts and doctors and the people who are trained professionally to deal with these kinds of relationship challenges. Yes, because you could get stuck on stupid, and stupid is what stupid does. I'm not calling anyone stupid, but you're talking you about know, actions. You're not talking about people. Exactly. I'm, I'm with that you. can make you do another thing and compound the situation even worse. Okay. So it's good to have someone with clarity and sense. Mm -hmm. And she advised them that think about their relationship as a bank account. Mm -hmm. And they're investing in this bank account. Mm -hmm. So they're only depositing good stuff in it. And during that conversation with uh, Dr. Pia, I think, if I'm not mistaken, one of the things that Orion uh, revealed, and I guess in a candid moment, is that he kind of felt like he had failed Lauren. Yes. Okay? Yes. But, you know, Lauren came back and responded and said, no, you haven't, you... you haven't done that. When um, Lauren kind of raised the, raised the temperature a little bit in terms of the tone of the conversation, he felt uncomfortable. Kind of felt like, okay, this is not going, you know, the way it could, and I'm trying to do my best, but it's not seeming you know, seemingly uh, being reciprocated. Do you think that he was uh, either consciously or subconsciously attacking her in any way? I didn't feel like he was attacking her. When he said he failed her, I didn't feel that was sincere simply okay. because he was dealing with that other thing that was burning him alive. Right, right. What she's got to do uh, is a better job of managing her emotions when things get a little testy, things get a little you know, heated, shall we say. Right. And that's always, that's always a good idea for all of us. You know, that's not just for her and, and Orion, but that's for all of us, I, I would guess. Right. And I guess he has an experience the heat that black woman will come at you it, with. It didn't sound like it. it. She was heated and, and very, uh, I guess, angry for, for lack of a better word. I think she was hurt and frustrated. Okay. So you don't think she was angry? I don't think she okay. was angry. I right. think she was hurt. And she was frustrated and so she was she trying was to reacting. find her way. So she was just She's reacting, reacting okay. emotionally. Okay. So when they I called Pastor Cal, mm -hmm. um, Orion called him because he respects Pastor Cal. Yeah. He came clean with Pastor Cal. Right. And he broke it down exactly what was hurting him. Yeah, it's like he had to talk to another... A man. Yeah, another male a figure, a man that he respected and, and could go to with this issue because he didn't know who to go to. He tried to talk Orion off the ledge. So to speak. Um, and he told them that what he's feeling is valid. Right. Which is very, very important. Yep. If Lauren had said that, it would have been a different situation altogether. Totally, uh, totally agree. Uh, completely, well, so completely. So he, he said he wanted to speak to her. Yes. So she comes through and she sits down. Orion is speaking. And while he is speaking, she is squirming. She has no right to do that simply because she's not understanding or embracing or acknowledging how hurtful what she said was to him. And then she, he said, my my people, my mother, my community. And he said, how will indigenous people feel 
seeing this mess. And I don't know, the world opened up when he said that to think of the massive amount of indigenous people who may look at this and feel offended, just like he is What's he's he, offended. What, from my vantage point, what he was doing was saying, hey, look, Get out of your own headspace for a moment and understand the ramifications or the impact of what exactly. you said exactly. on somebody else. And, and she didn't get that. The mistake that she made was making it about her and de trying to define, you know, some kind of uh, level of uh, grace and or accountability on her terms and not his. One thing I found amazing is that she said that Oh, he, he gave her grace and forgave her. But in this moment in time, he breaking down the real core of why he was upset. And instead of just sitting still and giving, opening herself up to not focus on herself and her emotions and how she's feeling, but to walk a mile in his shoes, so to speak. And she gets up and do the dramatic thing. Oh, I've researched this on Google. I've looked at the history. So you with anything. And yet, it's about still about her. Right. And she's and that, not focusing on what he is saying. Like it went boom, right over her head. And she missed a, uh, that moment of awareness that she needed to be able to, like you said, kind of rest in, the, rest in that spot and just process it, take it all in, and begin to truly understand. Right, and feel uncomfortable. Right, Because right. it's a, an uncomfortable moment and sit in it. Yes. Because you, what you said, you got to get through it. Right. And getting through it is to feel uncomfortable. So she didn't do that. And then she tells Pastor Cal, she, she, they had the argument and she was shouting and she took her ring off. And he asked her whether she wanted a divorce or not. And she, it, he, she said, no, she did not want a divorce. And then Orion said, at this point... Um, I don't feel like there's uh, um, anywhere to go between both of us. But she did say, you know, I think it was to Claire and maybe to somebody else. Uh, I don't remember who it was that, you know, in the heat of their uh, their kind of, kind of like ongoing uh, argument or, and or disagreement that she did say she did want a, a divorce. She did say that. Yes, yeah, she did say that. She went past the cutoff. Yes, yeah. She yeah. said, no, that's not what I want. One of the things that I think Orion did in this um, in this kind of particular scenario that I don't think he's taking responsibility for is being honest with the fact that he was harboring stuff. Yes, he is. Now, he may not see it as that, but that's in, in effect what he was doing. yes. Yes. And which is why it dragged on out um, and in some ways unnecessarily because he didn't address it at the time. He could have and maybe should have. Thanks. But, but the fact that she has already tried to make gestures, even though she's done it kind of awkwardly, yes. to to try to make uh, make amends for the stupid things that came out of her but flew out of her mouth, she has tried to make amends, but it didn't seem like from his vantage point, he was ready to hear that. Yes. Wanted to hear that and or accepted what she was saying. Harboring a deep grudge. Harboring, uh, harboring those kinds of feelings and harboring that scenario and, and, and the resentment, I definitely saw. The best place for him to start is that memory. He said some things that was hurtful for another community. If he stands in that spot and he feels the, the, the full impact of what that was and how it broke itself down to but, someone else hearing it, perhaps he can cross that bridge. People mess up all the time. Sometimes you need a higher power to get you to a place of forgiveness. And that ain't necessarily easy to do, especially when things are, are a hot, uh, yeah, are heated. Or and being able to understand that, hey, look, man, I can't hold on to this and constructively move forward with my wife if I do that. Once you've said it, you can't take it can't. back. Cannot, and you can't think that because you say sorry, it's gonna go away. Exactly, it's gonna go away when the person is ready to let it go. But it's a uh, memory recall is something, something interesting, man, and it can come back at any time. Yeah. Women have recall like nobody's business. You ain't lying, boy. Mm. Shit that happened twenty five years ago. Remember, <laughs> like it happened yesterday.
Aren't we fearlessly and wonderfully made? That's when, when God made us, he said, ah, oh, that's my God. So we'll go with what you said. <laughs>